Trading futures and options on futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility. And although this could be an equation for opportunity, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful, only fund your futures trading account with risk capital. My personal definition of risk capital is money I could afford to lose doesn't change my lifestyle or overly stress me out. As human beings, we make bad decisions when we're under stress, so be in a good spot. Remember, micro contracts could be friends. Take it easy on the day trade margins. You get plenty of leverage without maxing out on those day trade margins on a regular basis. We'll be taking a look at a real-time simulated live NinjaTrader trading platform today, and none of this should be construed as trade or investment advice. Past performance not indicative of future results. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed. My name is Jim Cagnino with Ninja Trader. It is March 11, 2024. And we have a special topic today, maybe the most important. I don't know. We're going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, the order flow package, the order flow indicators that come as part of, the, of one of the packages with the Ninja Trader platform. We're going to talk about order flow volume profile, order flow VWAP, order flow cumulative delta, and there's a couple of other ones also in the mix. So let's go ahead and start by just showing a, a, a bear chart, a basic candle chart. This is a 10 minute E mini SP candle chart. Nothing's on it, no indicators, no anything. So I'm going to go ahead and build uh, some information on this chart, which traders could hopefully use uh, to come up with uh, really good trade ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to add uh, an indicator. I'm going to add order flow volume profile. And there's a couple of ways to do it. The simplest way to do it is just to right click your mouse on the middle of a chart and you'll get a menu. You'll get a drop down menu with a whole bunch of options on it. I'm going to click on the word indicators and it's going to open up a dialog box. And this dialog box is going to give me a whole bunch of options. In the upper left hand corner are all the available indicators that I have on NinjaTrader platform. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the order flow section. And we have several to choose from. We have order flow cumulative delta. We have order flow market delta map. We have order flow trade detector. We have order flow volume profile. And we have order flow volume weighted average price or a VWAP. Let's go ahead and select order flow volume profile first. I'll just simply double click on that word. And what will happen is it'll send down the order flow volume profile indicator into the configured section. And I can configure it however I'd like. Now, I'm not gonna change any of the configuration yet. We'll come back to this in a moment, but I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and hit apply and then okay. And then we'll see it appear on the left-hand side of my chart. These are histogram bars and they're color coded. And each histogram bar represents the volume that's been traded throughout the session at any given price point. And as you can notice, some of the histogram bars are bigger than others. And the ones that are bigger simply have more volume that's traded at that particular price point. And it kind of gives us a profile, overall profile of where traders did more transactions throughout the session. And it's broken up into a couple of different areas. We have this dark blue in the middle. This is, this is called the value area. And then the light blue below, this is called prices below value. And then the, the, the light blue above, the light blue histogram bars above are called, well, you guessed it, prices above value. So those are the three sections. And I have them, I had them, I have them sectioned off with a line that goes all the way across to the right-hand axis on the top and the bottom. And in the middle, in the dark blue, the value area, as we call it, this is simply one standard deviation of volume that's traded uh, at, throughout the session. You know, approximately 68% of, of the volume is one standard deviation. And that's what we're seeing right here. Now, the other thing that's very important is what's called the point of control, right? This is the biggest histogram bar. I have a color coded here in uh, as gold, right? And that's called the point of control. And it's simply the histogram bar that's the biggest, right? It's the one that has the it has the most the most volume associated with that histogram bar. Now let's go back to the settings. Now that we know what it is, now that we know what it looks like, let's go ahead and right click and go back to the word indicators. And that dialog box will open up again. And at the bottom, you know, I'll make sure that the order flow volume profile is highlighted in the configure section. And I'm going to look at the property properties on the right-hand side. These are all properties you could change. 
is an, is an example. Um, calculate on bar closed. If you want to see the histogram bars uh, change on every on, on price change or on each tick, you could certainly do that. I'll go ahead and change it to on price change. So we get uh, uh, more up to date um, trade by trade pretty much um, uh, profile. So it'll update quicker. Type is, is, is volume, we'll leave it at volume. Display standard, we'll leave it at standard. Sessions here, this is where I could change the session, right? The default session is the whole um, the whole 23 hour trading session, right? And then we have bars or composite weeks or months. We're gonna leave it at sessions, right? We don't, we're just gonna look at the intraday, just one session. Um, and there's the one. Uh, trading hours, this is where you could set when you wanna start the profile, right? And again, I'm starting it at the open last night. It's a 23 hour marketplace but you could start it at any of these pre-configured times, right? You could start it as, a, as, a, as an example when the underlying cash market opens up, right? New York Stock Exchange, and maybe you just wanna track the profile then. So you could start that however you like. Resolution minute, ticks per level one, valuary percent, like I mentioned, 68%. That's one standard deviation approximately. And then um, we have a whole bunch of color options underneath. Under visual, these are color options, right? And we're, we're looking at this in the same input series. It's visible. The profile alignment's on the left. I could move the profile to the right of the chart if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it at the left. And then we have uh, profile width. That's the percent uh, across the screen. You could change this. I'll go ahead and change it to like, I don't know. We'll change it to 25. Uh, profile opacity, that will affect the, uh, the color differential between uh, the prices in the value area and prices above and below the value area. Um, here's the value area opacity you could change also. Again, that will affect the color differential. And then you have um, other color options and time options here. And we're not going to spend much time in the time options. Um, and then at the bottom here, we have extension lines and the colors of the lines and all of this stuff that could be customized. Now, under uh, show volume labels, you could check this way at the bottom. See this show volume levels way at the bottom. Check that. And it will actually put the volume uh, in the histogram bars themselves. Right. And then before I hit apply and OK, I do want to scroll all the way back up here. And I want to draw your attention to ticks per level. Each histogram bar is set for one tick. In other words, that's how high the histogram bar is. If I said, hey, you know what? I, don't, I wanna see a histogram bar on a point instead of a tick, that there's four ticks to a point in this, in this market. I could change this to a four as an example. So whatever, whatever uh, size or height of the histogram bar you'd like to set, that's where you, where you would change it. And it would accumulate, it'll accumulate volume within that four tick range or that one point range. You could set it at two, you could set it at one, you could set it at whatever you want. We'll keep it at one right now. And I'll go ahead and hit apply and okay. And remember, I shrunk this down to 25% of the viewing screen. And then there is the, there's the profile itself. Now, one thing to keep in mind, since, um, since we set each histogram bar at one, they're very thin. And the volume, you could only really see if you kind of, you know, stretch out the profile like I just did, right? You can see there's 14,322 contracts traded at this particular price. And that price is uh, 51.77 and a half. And that's the biggest, the biggest volume bar. Now we have a competing point of control a little bit higher here. It's only... It's only off by like 20 contracts or so uh, up high, but because it's not the biggest one, it doesn't get that golden color coding, right? But it does show you a volume node. It shows you where a lot of transactions happened within and around that point of control, which can be important important for traders. And as you go down, you can see that there's, I wouldn't call it a volume deficit, but certainly lower volume at this price point. It's an example right here at 51.73 and three quarters, we only have 3,280 contracts that have uh, been, been uh, transacted at that price point. So you could kind of get a sense of 
what I call price happiness uh, within the within the the scope of the session that we're analyzing here. We, you know, there's there's not a lot of transactions that happened up high in the profile. There's a lot of transactions that happened in the middle, and this does tend to become a bell shaped curve or a Gaussian distribution on a regular trading day. Right now, not so much. We almost have a double distribution with another volume node way down here at 5170. So, you know, how would you use this? There's many different ways to use this, but um, as an example, um, in a regular bell-shaped curve day, this point of control uh, acts like a mag, tends to act like a magnet. It doesn't always, but it tends to act like a ma uh, uh, act like a magnet. Traders may use the transition between the top of the value area and prices above value as a, as an area of interest to put order entries and to put stops and use that kind of kind of as an area where um, they consider it an important area where other orders might be. And then again, at the bottom of the value area here, the transition between the bottom of the value area and prices below value is another area as well. And there's a thing called value area trading where um, folks will sell the top of the value area, buy the bottom of the value area and hopes for that uh, transition to end up back to the point of control. Today's a little bit of a different day. Keep in mind, this is rollover today. So this particular market, the E-mini S&P is rolled over into June. And it's also triple witching this week with options expiration. So this market's probably not going to behave in a normal distribution today. We'll find out by the end of the day because volume could fill in at any at any given price. Oops, sorry about that. And it, goes, and it applies it day by day, as you can see in my intra- Day chart. Let's go ahead and format this a little bit better. So this is called order flow volume profile. And I use it all the time. And we use it on the opening range and bars closing all the time, both me and Tom Schneider. Um, and so it's just, again, another area of interest, a gauge of price happiness. And you could customize this to however you like. You could also apply um, this particular study uh, within, the, within uh, the chart itself. And I'll show you how to do that. You just right click and you're going to go, you'll click on drawing tools instead of indicators. You're going to click on drawing tools and another, you know, drop down menu appears. And then you could go down and you could add any of this stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and look for order flow volume profiles toward the bottom here, right? Control uh, three would be the, the hotkey. So I'll click on that and it activates it, right? Now let's say uh, I only want to see uh, the New York Stock Exchange open till now. And I'm just going to go ahead and highlight that area. And it will create, it will create a, uh, I don't know if it's, if you want to call it a, a, a mini uh, volume profile, or if you wanted to call it a, um, uh, you know, a, a profile within in the scope of a bigger profile. So it, this will give you where all of the transactions happened since the New York Stock Exchange opened till where we're at right now. Interesting thing about this is the point of control is exactly the same, I believe, as the overall profile as well. So that's kind of another point of analysis, if you will. So this is, you could apply it to the whole session. You could apply it to part of the chart. A lot of folks just apply it to the open in New York Stock Exchange and with, with, with respect to the E-mini S&P or a stock index future, if you will. Um, so that's that's how you would how you would add that study. That, that's kind of number one. That's that's my that's my go to. That's the most that's is the, this is the most important to me because it does show me a whole bunch of information. The type of the profile is it a Gaussian shape distribution? Is it a capital P shape distribution where all the volume is at the top? Is it a lowercase b distribution where all the volume is at the bottom? Or is it a double distribution, like a capital B, right? A distribution above and a distribution below. And you get a little bit of that on the overall profile on the left, but this isn't such a clear picture of that. Um, but what is a clear picture is there is this volume deficit right here, right? There's a little bit of a volume, I don't know, indentation, we'll call it, lack of interest, we could call it from around 74 half, you know, down to 72. And there's a couple of trains of thought here. One train of thought is this will eventually fill in, creating a more smooth distribution throughout the day. Or, hey, traders just don't want to be at this price. So they don't want to spend any time there. But, you know, the time will tell. By the end of the day, we'll know what this final distribution is. So that's order flow volume profile. 
So I'm going to leave that on the screen. And well, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the, sh the smaller one. I'm just going to delete it because I want to, sh the next study, I want you to be able to see really, really easily. And let me just go ahead and reduce my bar width a little bit. Okay. Very, very easy to do with the NinjaTrader software. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go back to indicators and let's explore some more order flow tools. And the next one I'm going to go ahead and add is called order flow VWAP volume weighted average price. It's right there in the list. I'll double click, bring it down to configured, right? I'm going to move across here and I've got some settings. I've got some things to think about. Now, the first thing that pops into mind is um, standard deviation bands. This is, a, this is a study where you have a volume weighted average price. It's a running total. It goes from whenever you start the study all the way till the last tick that's traded. And you could have standard deviation bands around them. You could have up to three. You could have up to three. So standard deviation bands, three. I'm just going to change this to two so we don't look so cluttered, right? So we'll have two standard deviation bands. And then you could do stuff like color uh, the standard deviation bands and you know, kind of make it however you want to graphically see it. Before I make any of those changes, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, apply the study. I'm going to calculate uh, on price change. Um, so that every time the price changes, then it will update the volume weighted average price. And then at the bottom here are more color coding as an example. So order flow VWAP right now I have, let's, let's change this from green. I don't know. I like purple. That's just my personal preference. You could use whatever you like or dark magenta. That sounds good. Let's change that. And we'll keep the standard deviation bands the way they are. We'll keep it solid. We'll keep it uh, plot style line with one, and we'll, we'll keep all that the same. Let's go ahead and hit apply and okay and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's what it looks like uh, on the chart. And you can see the VWAP is in the middle, right? Volume weighted average price is in the middle. Um, and we didn't fully change it to purple yet, but we will. Um, I just wanted to show you that um, when the volume weighted average price is going up, it's green. When it's going down, it's red. And it just kind of it looks like a Bollinger Band almost, right? And then there's a, a two standard deviations around uh, the, the volume weighted average price. And then there's the second one. Remember, you could add a third one if you want. Um, and then you can get information. Are the bands contracting? Are they expanding? Are they tilting upward? Are they tilting downward? Is one of them tilting downward and one of them tilting upward? Those kinds of analysis could be really easily done here. Uh, with the or uh, with the VWAP. Now, historically, um, volume weighted average price was treated as a as a direction is uh, is a measure of the change in direction, right? So, for instance, let's just kind of look up here. You know, early morning, seven o'clock, we kind of sold off a little bit. We were trading above the volume the the volume weighted average price, and then we sold off and we started trading below it, right? So, so traders might say, well. As soon as we close below this VWAP, then the direction changed from upward to downward, right? And then continue downward through a couple of the bands, and then it really back up. Um, and then not only did it really back up, but it kind of became resistance, right? Even though it's sloping downward, we hit we haven't had a candle close. We haven't had a candle close above the VWAP, really until another directional change, short-term directional change. We went ahead and, and rallied and then broke it again and rallied again. So we've been, we've been trading through volume weighted average price uh, most of the day. Now, sometimes in a trending market, you will never see volume weighted average price again. You'll be trading above it for the whole session, or you'll be trading below it for the whole, whole session. So this gives us clues on direction. It gives us clues on trends. It gives us clues, areas of interest with respect to the VWAP, VWAP bands themselves. We'll call them VWAP bands. Um, and again, you could customize the colors to make them a little bit better than these. I'm just going to go ahead and we'll, we'll experiment with some color customization right now. Why not? We have time, right? Absolutely, we do. And I forgot to open up one thing, folks. So bear with me really, really super quick. And I'm going to do that just in case. And by the way, if you do have any questions, pop them into the chat. Um, and the chat is easily found, ninjatrader.com forward slash events. Just go to ninjatrader.com forward slash events and you could pop into the chat and ask questions. Um, all right, so what do we want to do here? Let's, let's take a peek. Um, colors were one thing, right? 
in, uh, let's go ahead and highlight VWAP on the left-hand side. So the properties window on the right-hand side changes. Um, so I'm gonna change this red to magenta and this green to magenta. So now, so now that, that line in the middle is going to be uh, going to be purple. And the other thing you might wanna do if you're thinking about um, uh, the, the way your chart looks, you could change your, the areas a little bit uh, more to make it a little bit a, a little bit more uh, readable. It doesn't have to be cornflower blue as, as a matter as an example from you know the color coding between the um, the VWAP and the first standard deviation band. And so I'm just to kind of highlight what that would look like. I'm just going to change it to uh, now. I'll just change it to transparent. We'll just change it to transparent, okay? And then you also have the opacity things you could change as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make those two changes. I'm going to apply, and okay. And you can see right now it's transparent, right, between VWAP and the first standard deviation band, and then between the first and the second standard deviation band, it's still that cornflower blue. And I don't know, maybe that helps you see it better. Again, you could you could make the lines whatever color you want. So right now we're trading right uh, in between the upper uh, standard deviation band and the lower standard deviation band, right? And then I see that the point of control right here is in play as well. So now I'm thinking, aha, now instead of doing value area trading, maybe my trading becomes, hey, sell at the top of the value. It's you know close to that VWAP band, the first uh, VWAP band. Um, do I not have my chart trader on? Let's turn my chart trader on, chart trader hidden. Um, and I'll right click and I'm just don't do this uh, at, uh, from at home, but I'm just literally, um, let's just turn it on. Um, I'm just literally uh, showing how to uh, uh, do this particular, uh, this trade idea. And then you can, again, so you, you'd be short uh, here at the top uh, of the, the view band, long at the bottom uh, of the, of the view app standard deviation band and hope for that kind of uh, oscillation be, uh, back to the point of control in either case. Makes sense. So that's so that's so that's how you would actually. Uh, let me put on a sim. There we go. All right. Now I got an actual account set up. Way to go, Jim. Try it again. Right click to get short. Right click to get long. Don't follow along at home. But I'm just kind of showing the potential here, right? Showing the potential. Or maybe you're saying, hey, if we, again we test this upper VWAP band, then I want to see a drive back down to the point of control because we can't. You know, we haven't. We haven't had a body of a candle below the point of control for quite some time. And you'd pull this order up here like that. Really easy to do with the chart trader. Um, so that's just an example of a strategy, right? Another strategy might be, um, well, um, you know, we start tr uh, uh, trading above the value area, which is right next to the that that first standard deviation volume weighted average price band. Then and only then do I want to I want to I want to do a breakout trade. I want to go ahead and buy. I want to buy a, a contract on a breakout to the upside. So I would do that with uh, what was what would traditionally be considered a stop order, a protective stop. But you could do you could enter the market on a stop also. That would be a breakout trade to the upside if you felt that was you know, that was going to happen. Right. So that's, that's a couple of the ways you could use, you could use that. So this is my second go-to. This is my second go-to on the order flow. Let's go ahead and do a third one. Let's like upper game a little bit more. I'm going to right click again, right? Uh, I'm going to right click again. Now that you could, you can get the indicators up here if you want, right? See that you don't have to right click on the chart. There's this little, uh, little button at the top of the chart and you could just click on that to get your indicator window open, and then it'll open it up. Same one we've been looking at so far this half hour. So I'm gonna scroll down to order a flow uh, cumulative delta. This is a fan favorite of uh, Mr. Credelli, of Anthony Credelli. I'm gonna highlight it. It's down in the configure section. So these are the three things that are applied to my chart. And then I'm gonna go over to my properties uh, side and you know I'm gonna keep uh, delta type at bid ask. You could change it to up, down, tick, if you want, but I'm gonna keep it a bit ask. It's, it makes more sense to me uh, to do it that way. And then period, it's either session or bar. And in my mind for, to for real cumulative market delta, I like to look at the session cumulative, not the bar cumulative. So, but again, if you just, you could change it to bar if you want, but I'm gonna keep it on session uh, for now. And then I'm gonna keep everything else the same, calculate on each tick, that's pretty good. We'll leave it there for now. And then um, I'm going to put it on a new panel. In other words, it's going to be on a panel below the chart. It's not going to be 
overlaid on top of the chart and my scale definition is going to remain right what, uh, to the right. So I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit okay. And it'll count. Cal oh, that calculated fast. Now, again, I'm on a 10 minute candle chart for the E-mini S&P. And now I have my order flow cumulative delta um, at the bottom here. And what this is showing is you'll see, it looks like a candle, right? This looks like a candle chart kind of, well, it is a candle chart to be honest with you. But, um, and what this is showing is it's either a red, a red candle or um, a, a, a green candle, right? Green's increasing, red's decreasing. And that is showing you the net difference between trades that are made uh, on the offer and trades that are made on the bid. So that's the delta part. Delta just means the difference or the change, right? So when, when trades are made on, on the offer or on the sell side of a trading ladder, um, then that typically results in upward price pressure, right? And when trades are done on the bid on a cumulative basis, that typically does the opposite, right? It reduce, it brings the price down. And so, you could use this to say, okay, what's the total cumulative uh, uh, net for trades on the bid or trades on the offer? And it's broken up into 10, 10, 10 minute increments, just like your, your chart is as well. And you can see a lot of green, right? You can see a lot of green right here representing uh, uh, more trades on, on the offer side of a trading ladder. Let me see if I have a trading ladder handy here. It's a good way to see it right here. By the way, I have a tick for tick volume profile on my trading ladder. That's pretty, that's pretty good, right? Um, it's not really moving very much. It's lunchtime. It's kind of slow today, but um, this is a good way to think about bids and offers or bids and asks, depending on you know your nomenclature. This is the sell column. This is where the offers are or the asks are. These are limit orders at the CME group. And these are contracts that are, this is transparent marketplace where contracts are literally sent there and they're waiting in the order book. And then they're canceled, replaced, they're added to, they're subtracted, they're mo they move around, they're dynamic. And on the left-hand side, on the buy side is where the bids are. These are limit orders to buy. Right. And so you can see the flow there. You can see order flow right there as well on the trading ladder. But when trades are happening on the sell side, right, on the offer, then that's what pushes price up. And that's when you see a green bar. And then uh, the opposite is on the bid side. When trades are happening on the bid side, then that pushes it down. That's when you see a red, a red bar. And remember, it's a it's the it's the net difference. It's not an absolute number. So um, that's how you would read that. So I thought that, uh, I think that dome is pretty helpful. So um, how do you use this in a practical way? Well, one way is to look for divergence, right? One way is to look for divergence and say, all right, um, if if we have a series of green, can, uh, green candles, but price is not appreciating or price is going down or price is going sideways, then I could say, well, we have some divergence here, which means the market price is going to catch up with the cumulative delta. So in a green uptrend, that's when I want to try to get long if I find the right place. And then in a red, that's when I want to try to get short. That's one way to use uh, the cumulative delta. The other way is to use it, um, it when it has a directional change, right? And, and so let's just take a peek here, uh, 930, right? And I'll just draw some, some lines really quickly here. So 930, we had a downtrend in cumulative delta. Right. And that, and that happened for about 40 minutes. That happened for a long time. And so let's do the corresponding trend at the top, which would have corresponded to approximately here to here. Right. So everything is cool. Everything look, looks, looks pretty good. Now, what happened is uh, we had a reversal in cumulative delta where we kind of spiked up. Right. We shot up. And this is a, a loosely fitting trend line. So um, bear with me a little bit, but we really didn't have any price appreciation until here, right? This candle closed it, with which with a pretty negative looking bar, right? This is a let's open this up a little bit better, right? This doji, I mean, this you know, sellers pushed this wick all the way back down to where we started from here, right? So that kind of rally failed, right? But the next candle, it did it. And look where we are with the cumulative delta. It was still accumulating, right? So green, still positive on the offer side. And, uh, and so at this point in time, this is when that divergence ended, right? And we picked up a couple of candles of pretty healthy price movement, about 11, more than 11 handles, actually, 61, 
up to uh, 78. So that's another way to look at cumulative delta um, and to help you use it in conjunction with all the other order, order flow tools also. And while all of these things are in play, then um, you have three different tools to help you with. You know, Number one, we have divergence here. Number two, we have a breakthrough above the first standard deviation band. And number three, we have a drive back up to the point of control. And so that's how I, you could put all three of those things together, all three of those order flow uh, 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 tools uh, together, if you will. So, that, so that's kind of the outline of what I feel like are the really powerful uh, order flow tools. If you don't see the order flow tools on your indicator list, reach out to your broker, whoever it is. NinjaTrader uh, software is a broker neutral platform. And so uh, just, you know, hey, how do I get the order flow uh, package on my NinjaTrader software? It's, it's really easy uh, once you get it. And then there's a couple other ones we're not going to spend too much time on today, but um, we do have um, order flow market depth map. And what that does is that shows kind of a history in a heat map format of all the bids and asks that were in the order book over a period of time, right? It's a little, it's, it's a little bit too messy for me to put up here right now, but that's what that is. I encourage everybody to experiment with the market depth map. And it's, you could kind of see where all the bids and offers were over a long period of time, right? And you could almost visualize Jose Blasco's uh, unfilled orders, UFOs, on the chart itself. Um, and then lastly is the order flow trade detector. Again, you could experiment with that uh, when you get time by adding that. So these are, these are the main five uh, order flow packages that are available on NinjaTrader. And in my humble opinion, uh, they're pretty, uh, pretty powerful. All right. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, and again, we, we, apply, um, we apply these tools uh, every day in the opening range in the morning, bars closing in the afternoon. And we, and we talk about best practices um, and we look for trade ideas in real time um, uh, on, in a real time SIM account. And we, you know, the idea is to come up with good trade ideas and then um, do a lessons learned after, you know, what happened? Was it a good trade idea or a bad trade idea? And how do we better apply these tools? It's a moving, ongoing, continual education process here uh, at NinjaTrader. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. Appreciate you being here. Remember, most important message of the day, be safe out there, be good to each other. See you soon.